The agriculture industry has suffered a $1.8 billion loss over the last four Drought years. Drought and extreme heat have made this a very busy fire season. The drought we're in is disastrous. 80% of all antibiotics sold are used unnecessarily on livestock. Commercial livestock accounts for about half of the greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. We haven't been this dry in decades. The CAFO, a concentrated animal feeding operation, set up to maximize efficiency and profit regardless of the cost. This type of livestock production is one of the most resource-intensive practices on the planet. It's been made possible through massive taxpayer subsidies, but the true cost is enormous. Drought, desertification, carbon emissions, dead zones, disease. We know this. The CAFO is degenerative, meaning when we look at the big picture, it is continuously degrading the ecosystems that it relies on. At the end of the day, to be truly economical and efficient, farming needs healthy ecosystems. After seeing just how degenerative CAFO ranching is, I started researching if there is a truly regenerative way of ranching cattle. I found Dr. Alan Williams, who is known for doing just that. He's pioneered a relatively unknown approach to ranching that's hugely profitable, efficient, all while regenerating the ecosystem and environment. It's called regenerative ranching. I set off to Bibb County, Alabama to meet him and see his regenerative ranch with my own eyes. I consider Alan to be the uh, grass-fed guru of our, um, of our generation right now. I don't know if he'd appreciate that, but that's what I've been thinking of him as. So the cows are going through another move today, and this is what high density grazing is all about, multiple moves a day. With regenerative grazing, we mimic what the bison once did by building appropriately sized paddocks each day that allow us to graze hundreds of cattle across each paddock. Once the cattle have eaten some of the grass, trampled some, and fertilized the area, they are immediately moved to the next paddock and then the next. This practice produces profound results that prevent overgrazing and promote tremendous fertility and growth. If we focus first and foremost on the soil in restoring that soil function and biology, then everything else comes much easier. So the important thing that differentiates between dirt and soil is soil organic matter, right? Yes. And soil organic matter is actually 50% carbon, which means if we're regenerating and rebuilding soil, we're actually putting carbon into the ground. Now I've been told and we've read in books that it takes hundreds to thousands of years to build back soil. How quick are you doing it here? We are able to build new soil organic matter at the rate of a half to 1% annually. Let's put some perspective on this. A 0.4% increase of soil organic matter on the world's agricultural soils would completely negate all current CO2 emissions. Allen is increasing his soil organic matter by 0.5% or 1% every year. If we add just one more percent soil organic matter, that means that every single acre can hold another 25,000 gallons of water. Ready? Go. So we just did our water infiltration test and found that it took only four seconds to infiltrate the first half inch of water. That means we're keeping our water here, right here. When you contrast that with the average farm and ranch across North America, the average water infiltration rate is less than a half inch an hour. So, so two things are happening to that water that's sitting on top of the surface now. One is that you're going to have a percentage of it that's going to evaporate, and then the second is you're going to have a higher percentage that's actually going to run off. It's going to carry with it topsoil to the effect of four tons plus per acre annually. You've got a lot of nitrates and phosphates that are leaving your soil 
and going downstream. They're going into our rivers, into our bays, into our gulfs, into our lakes and creating significant issues. Adjacent to Allen's farm is a soy field that exemplifies degenerative agriculture. This is one of the major reasons why CAFO systems are so degenerative, because this is where the feed comes from. Look at this soil. It is literally turning to dust, and we're losing probably four tons to 10 tons of topsoil per acre per year on this type of agriculture. We could convert this land, this vast amount of land, could be easily converted to start feeding cattle. Instead of shipping all this soy thousands of miles to those feedlots, why don't we just do it right here? Without using any imported water, feed, fertilizer, or pesticides, Allen has increased his production five-fold in the last three years. We keep passing these ranches that look way more depleted than Allen's ranch. So, Alan, we were driving past tons of ranches on the way here, and they have way less grass than you. What we're looking at here, we have easily three and a half times more forage growing per acre. I can carry three and a half times more cows on the same 5,000 acres, which means more net profit. So many people have the misconception that to do good for the environment, you can't make a lot of money. Alan's model completely turns this upside down. Then of course it begs the question, why aren't all farmers and ranchers doing that? So I asked Alan and he was just like, simply thin. It's just because people don't know. We know what we can do. And we know how profound this impact is. Not just on the farmers and ranchers themselves and their quality of life and their ability to make a good living, but also on the rural economies surrounding these farms and ranches. We can rebuild our ecosystem, our degraded soils and our degraded water cycles. That's what excites me. And we're creating opportunity to bring young people back into agriculture, young people that have a hunger and a thirst to be able to achieve these things. So that's, that's what I strive to do. That's what we live for every day now. So really you're a grass and soil farmer and the cows are secondary. That's correct. <laughs> They're the tool we use yeah. to build soil.